Welcome to A Sandwich and Some Lovin' Podcast. I'm Kelly Raspberry Evans with my husband and my podcast co-host and now movie critic, I guess we're going to say, Alan Evans. A train in the house. Yes, we uh, we did a thing yesterday. We did a thing. We did. Real quick before we move on. Yes. Uh, Susan has been going back and listening to all of her podcasts from the beginning. So he's in shocker? Yeah, and she misses you saying, hello, I'm Alan. Oh, I'm saying, I don't know exactly what point it switched to. I don't think I've done that in five train years. train in the house, but she likes, hello, I'm Alan. <laughs> well, the, the A train started... I mean, that started years ago because it was we after went after a birthday with you and Bad Bad Influence Jeff, Jeff and yeah. Brad. And a dude named Brad. The yeah. man that started that nickname, don't even know D- what I happened to him. I don't know where he is. He was, was B Train. Yeah. A Train, and it was J Train. And it was a it was a drunken night friend sitting around. Bad train. Oh, it wasn't are you kidding that bad. me? Drunker it wasn't that bad. Drunker than Cooter Brown. It wasn't that bad. Well, we were exaggerating. We were all sitting around this round table, and all of a sudden, Brad just said, I was the A train, and there's the J train, and then he was the B train. Yeah. And then we started doing the, you know, like the cheerleaders, they do the, the letters, you know? So he was B train. It was hilarious J, at the time. Train. Y'all. It was hilarious and then, at the time. A trade and oh everyone and Alan wouldn't oh, let it go just wouldn't let it go he's the only one that wouldn't let it go we don't even know but we just let Brad go I'll he la- was a nice guy I'll latch on to a bit like a pit bull with lock jaw well maybe give hello I'm Alan another uh, just pull it out of your arsenal every once in a while a lot of people I know you guys play that drop on the on the Kid Craddock Morning Show of nationally syndicated. Yes, and um, that's not me. No, it's Alan Thick. It's Alan Thick. Late great. Yes, but I can kind of say, "Hello, I'm Alan." It's kind of like, that. "Hello, I'm Alan." He's kind of like that. Canadian. Good eye, mate. Is he Canadian, really? Yeah. How about that? I did not know that. I hope that's right. <laughs> King of Fame. Femi- I just said, I just said the late great Dabney Coleman the other day. Ooh. Come to find out, Dabney Dabney is alive and well, or at least. As of this podcast recording, he is a ripe old 98 degrees. Uh, 98, <laughs> 98 years old. Oh, got boy bands on the brain. King of Again, fa- not drunk. King of famous Canadians. Oh my gosh. Are you serious? You really want to derail? Brian Adams. Avril Lavigne. Captain Kangaroo. That's not true. Celine Dion. Yogurt. I'm, I pan- I'm the I pan- king I of panicked. Canadians. Yeah, I panicked. I panicked. Al Whitley. Al Whitley, <laughs> good friend of ours. Al Whitley yeah. is is very Canadian. The band Chilliwack. Nickelback. Wow, well, I've already beat you. The Bare Naked Ladies. I've already beat you. We're done. Why could I We're not done. think of another Canadian than Ryan Reynolds? Brian? Ryan Reynolds yep. is Canadian. Yep. Alanis Morissette. Well, I knew that one. Yeah. Well, that just blew my mind. Ryan Reynolds is Canadian. Yes. Is that why he's really nice? Yes. I've never met a Canadian that's not nice. I'm sure they exist. Well, Avril Lavigne. I'm sure they exist. We've kind of moved on from that. She was not very nice when we met her. She was very moody and broody, and that's where she gets her art. Well, that was her bit, right? But we're going to speak of another Ryan. So, uh, oftentimes, Ryan Reynolds and Ryan Gosling are confused. Yes. People get a little uh, mixed up on those two, but we just went to see. We were lucky enough to be invited to a sneak screening, a pre-screening of The Fall Guy, starring Emily Bunt, Ryan Gosling, a surprise cameo. We're not going to give that away. We hope nobody spoils it for you before you see it, but it was really a fun time. So we're going to do a little movie review, and um, I have a bad, bad habit on this podcast. Well, I have a lot of bad habits on this podcast, but one in particular is teasing something that I'm going to talk about, or that we're going to talk about. Oh, yeah. And then I don't talk about it. We've both done that before. But I do it a lot. But I do it a lot. We forget or we run out of time. We run out of time. And some people are of the opinion we talk too much. Stop talking. I think those are the ones that they outnumber the ones who think we should just keep on going. Yeah. So we're going to just, you know, we're going to keep it short and sweet tonight. How about it? How about it? So short and sweet. Oh, but anyway, the point I was trying to make is I teased a list because people love lists. I very much do. I have a list working right now. Last time of things that I see on the social medias 
And uh, I think we're guilty of doing these things, saying these things. Okay. So, I mean, we can launch right into it if you want. Movie review, we want to end on a positive Yeah, note? we'll end on a positive Because this might, this might tick me off. I wouldn't be well, surprised. Well, I don't think it will tick you off, but I think... It's a list um, of things that what? List of things that people say on social media... That? That have almost become cliche. Okay. So, as I go through the list, you will recognize these... You have maybe said some of these. I have probably said some of these. We see these all the time. I would say that my overall feeling about these words and phrases is they're annoying. Okay, so this is a list of annoying cliches. I think so. All right. Number one, I did a thing. I. That's what we opened the podcast with. We did a thing. Not often. That's not one of my crutches. I don't use that a lot. Usually it means... If I've used it maybe once or twice, but not a lot. People will say, I did a thing, and then show a picture of a car they bought. Or, I did yeah. a thing, and show like how they have a different haircut. Yeah, yeah. I may, maybe have done it once or twice. I don't think I've ever said that. I don't think I ever have. If I have, it's been in jest. Mm. Um, number two, so that doesn't annoy you. Um, it, I can see where it gets old, but it's fine. Okay. And no judgment if you, dear, sweet, clean, good, strong listener, use these. I'm just saying. We well, you're see... saying it's annoying, well, so you it's are a little, judging. Well, it is a little bit annoying. Uh, number two, adulting. I'm over that. That's that's really old. Adulting? Yeah, when I first heard it, it was really cute. I don't want to adult today. Uh-huh. I'm busy adulting. Yeah. Th- that, uh, that we can put to What's bed. What's that mean? Like grocery shopping? I'm just doing a responsible paying, things. Paying bills. Responsible things. Fill boring the, things. Fill on the car with things gas. Things that we always wish we could have done when we were younger. We didn't realize what that really meant. Going to the dry cleaner? Yeah. But actually, I like doing those things. I like doing errands. Okay. I do. Number three. I'm not crying. You're crying. That doesn't bother me. See this in the comments a lot. Yeah. Sad video. Yeah. Gets you in your feels. Gets you in the feels and then someone will say, I'm not crying. You're crying. Ah, uh, that's fine. You are okay with that one? I'm all right. I'm, I'm okay. Is someone chopping onions in here? Yeah. 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 That's not that Not on the list, but we, we can add an addendum and a addendum. Uh, number four. I'm just going to leave this here. Is that the same? That's the same. I'm just going to leave this here. Usually in reference to like a meme or something controversial, someone will just say, I'm just going to leave this here, just wanting, I guess, wanting comments. Or I'm just going to leave this here is for you to think about it right. and then get back to me. Right. It's almost like they're, dro- I think almost like they're dropping a truth bomb. I'm going to leave just, this here. I'm, you get back to me when you realize I am right and you are wrong. Right. That's what that means. Right. I'm just going to leave this here. Uh, number five. This dot dot dot. Or just this period. I, I don't understand that. That's when you're like, you agree with something instead of doing the hundred uh, or the crazy signs. You're like, yeah. this. This. I've seen this. We you didn't a, even know what it means and you were annoyed no, by now it. No, I know. We have a good friend that does this a lot. A little annoying. But that just means amen. Would you let him say amen? He wouldn't say amen. Well, why not? Would he spontaneously combust? <laughs> Number six, my person. My person. Well, it's it's sort of like my lobster. What does that mean? Well, it's a friends reference. Well, I never saw a full episode well, of Friends. People who know know. Another annoying saying, if you know, you know. And don't come at me with, you've never seen an episode of Friends? How come you've never seen an episode of Friends, Alan? Well, I've also never seen Top Gun. Never seen Top Gun. He refuses at this point. It's uh, just like his thing. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's just his I, thing. Because when Top Gun came out in the movies recently, the sequel, I said, the, real, the first one's on. He wouldn't watch it. It's his bit. It, just, it hadn't aged well. You don't know. You haven't seen it. I've seen clips. You haven't seen the whole movie in its entirety to be able to judge. Is Tom... I got in a huge fight one time with a guy oh. that insisted that Top Gun was about the Air Force. And I said, no. Even I knew that. It's about Navy pilots. He's like, the Navy's got ships. I had a huge fight with a guy over that. Met him at a party. Did, how, how, did he, how did he talk? Like 
Oh, he was country. It was in Florence, South Carolina. South Carolina. It was one of those parties that I was, you know, invited to in college. And I was kind of nervous because I knew I, you know, I wasn't really one of those girls that really felt comfortable at one of those college parties. But, yeah, we kind of got in a fight about that. Okay. They, it was, in fact, the U.S. Navy in Top Gun. Yeah. Yes. The Navy has ships, true. And pilots. They also have submarines. And they pilots. They also have helicopters. And uh, a lot of airplanes. There's very few things in life I love more than being right. Okay. Uh, number one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, did I do this one? My person? Yes, you just did that when you got oh. launched into My Lobster and you launched into I Haven't Seen Friends and Sorry, that led we, to we, Top Gun. we get off these, tra- these bunny trails. I knew where we were. Uh, number seven, Fur Baby. What's wrong with that? Do we refer to the dogs as fur babies? No, Should we you don't. refer to the dogs as fur babies? We I don't care if you do. We, we just don't. I don't care if you do. I don't really care about that one too much. Yeah, I don't ah, care. fur baby. It's not whatever. You you do you, you boo. Do, you do you boo on the fur baby. I don't really care. Uh, it's just not something I would say. I mean, Zoe's not my fur baby. Well, I don't think it's for you to say. I think it's more for uh, women. I just feel like wow. I just feel like that's more of a women wow. thing. Why is that wow? Wow. So Why is that wow? Are you saying I can't say it? I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying that's just probably something more of a woman would say. Okay. Uh, number eight, all the feels. Again, these are not, an, that's not. These aren't annoying you, huh? Okay. Apparently it does well, you or you wouldn't be bringing them up. Well, the first couple did, but these are okay. Fur baby and all maybe the you should feels. Have, maybe you should have researched this list a little but more thoroughly. But you wouldn't say that. Just because I don't say it doesn't mean I'm that bothered by it. In fact... You know, like living with Landon, her bit was all the things, all the things. And I was like, oh, I like that, all the things. And a lot of people started saying all the things. Now, I've maybe tried dropping it a couple times. I don't You did? I maybe. I don't know. Wow. This is all the things. I love wow. all the things. But I don't know. It's just, I don't think that's me. Wow. I don't think it's me. Thought I don't you, know what I say. That's thought, you were, thought you were a leader, not a follower. Well, I mean, somebody's. Uh, number nine, the struggle is real. I've probably said that. I don't think think anything. I don't think you've said. That. I think I'm sure I have. The struggle. I'm sure I have. I can't say definitively. I have not. The struggle is real. Yeah. The struggle is real. I guess that would be like if there's like tons of uh, kids' laundry, and you're just you're not adulting that day. You need to do a thing and get through. The struggle is real. And then leave it there. And then say this. And then go have lunch. How with, do you feel about that list? And then go have lunch with your person. Was it quite as... Well, I'm not done yet. I, oh, there's more. There's always more. Okay. Uh, number 10, good vibes only. Okay. If you're going to the beach, that's fine. Good vibes only? If you're a beach bum and you work in a, a Tommy Bahama, in the maybe in the restaurant side or a surf shop, I'm, I'm cool with that. Okay. Now, here's one that I kind of like, and I think I may have said this. I don't know that I've ever written it and posted on social media, but blank just hits different. For example, a beer in the shower just hits different. Why would you drink a beer in the shower? Because it hits different. A beer in the shower hits different. It hits wrong. No, it hits different. Different doesn't mean right. A bologna sandwich at the beach with a bag of Cheetos That's just hits true. different. That's true. Right? Then versus eating it in your kitchen. A hundred percent. Anything you take to the beach and eat on the sand hits different. Just hits different. And I don't know why that is. What else just hits different? Honey, if you'd have given me about five or ten minutes before the podcast, That's not what we I would do. have come up with something That's not what we do. that hits different. But the beach, eating on the beach thing did resonate with me. Okay. Uh, number 11? No. Oh, God. This list does not end. Well, it's, well, I, it's thir- Usually, lists are 10. People love lists. Uh, number 11, normalize. Let's, well, normalize typically is a liberal... Uh, whoa, whoa. Well, what are we whoa. normalizing? Do conservatives worry whoa. about normalizing anything? Whoa. No. Wow. Some hot sports opinions right there. Is it? <laughs> is it? Kelly... Um, number 12. Oh, okay. I see this one a lot. Asking for blank. You see this one on Facebook a lot. Asking for 
blank. Okay, go. Like asking for best hotel in Mexico. Okay, go. Asking, Why does that bother you? Asking, asking for best recipe for fried chicken. Okay, go. What's wrong with that? Why don't you just say, hey, everybody. Uh, I was just wondering if uh, anybody had some good fried chicken recipes. Or, hey, everybody. Hope everybody's having a good day. I was just wondering if anybody knew of a good hotel in Mexico. Why do you have to say... That's boring. Why do you have to say asking for recommendations? It's a call okay, to go. It's a call to action, and people respond to calls to action. CTA? Okay, well, maybe... Alan's, e Alan's easily annoyed, well, you, is what I'm finding. Well, you, gotta, you gotta be. You gotta, you gotta be aren't easily you, aren't annoyed? Aren't you supposed to take a side on this? Don't you, when you get older, you just kind of like... Live and let live. No, I get older, crustier, and my blood pressure gets higher. Number thirteen, I was. I know I have used this. I was today years today's years old. I was today when, years old. I was today years old when. I've used that. I've used that too. Does it annoy you when you use it on yourself? <laughs> here's the, here's the thing about me and what I see on online or really anywhere on TV. It, anything that gets overdone and overplayed and over talked about annoys me. Okay. Well, when I feel like somebody's cramming something down my throat, especially in the media, that annoys me. Okay. Just saying. All right. Why don't you just point out the next thing I do that's <laughs> annoying and no, I will add I, it to I wasn't, your never-ending list. That wasn't in reference to you. Why were you looking at me like that? I just point out that things. That wasn't in reference to you. Just point out things this week. Why don't you just point out everything that I do that annoys you, and we'll present that well, list next podcast. This has nothing podcast. to do with you. We did this two podcasts ago where we talked about you wanted a list of things that what was it? You wanted to hear something that I didn't like about you or something or you could do better you wanted you wanted a list of things that you could do better and I said I don't really have anything and I thought about it for a second I'm like just leave the DNA in the vegetables just uh, al allow them to live a little bit I remember that, that was it that was all I had okay and tonight well, if something and else if, if something <laughs> happens to occur between now and the next podcast you all will hear about it and tonight you prepared I a promise hey I'll give, I'll give Kelly props tonight. She prepared a very, very nice home-cooked, from scratch, chef, uh, what do you call it, chef-driven, scratch kitchen. It, it was, was good. It was a crock pot recipe. It was good. It was very good. I promised Alan I was going to start trying to cook more at home. And my friend Susan, who I've already mentioned in this podcast. A lot of way, Susan references. Maybe this podcast should be titled A Sandwich and Some Susan. A Sandwich and Some Susan. But yeah. she is a cook and cooking yeah. is her love language. Yeah. And Susan's a great cook. She, I went over to her house recently and she always cooks. And she made um, this pork tenderloin in a Dutch oven, which I do not have. And in fact, she told me, she told you to get me a Dutch oven for my birthday. you got to change your voice. She told me she told you to get me one, and you didn't. Do you remember having that conversation where she suggested a Dutch oven, but then you were of the opinion that you don't give appliances for birthdays? What did, um, okay, I'm glad we're having this discussion, because I was asked what you wanted, and I right. told somebody to get you a Dutch oven. I guess that didn't happen. Who was supposed to get it for me? Uh, that would be your boss. Oh, no, no. He gave me a gift card instead Okay. to Tori Birch. That's, that's what happened. Okay, that's fine. Um, but I, I was every so year, I ordered one for myself. Just so you know, every year I'm asked for a birthday list. Well, I got one ultimately from is, Nicole. Is the point? So and I tell her what I think you would like. Um, but today, I so I went to the grocery store. Um, I was going to do something in the Dutch oven, but man, ingredients are very expensive for certain recipes. And so I decided I bought some chicken thighs because they were on sale for $1.99. And I know Alan likes chicken thighs because they're more juicy than chicken breasts. This. And so I did a crock pot. I literally just Googled uh, crock pot chicken thigh recipe. It's giving me all the and feels. And that's what came up. Well, good vibes only. What is, what are you, what is? Oh, no, no, what? That you're, why are you repeating a phrase that's annoying? <laughs> I don't know, just to be annoying. Uh, what's the other thing we were going to talk about? Well, we we're going to talk about the movie review. After well, you do this. Oh. We don't have anything like that. Anyway, um, we did get to go to a, a screening of the new movie, The Fall Guy. The which Fall I was Guy. I'm very excited about because I love Ryan Gosling. I think he's just so funny and so cute and just 
suave and silly and he, he's in on the joke and I just love him. And he's with Ava Mendez, you know, they keep their relationship very, very private. Them together as a couple, I need to go back, I think it was called Into the Pines or something is the movie they met on, gosh, about 12, 13 years ago. They have two daughters together, keep them out of the limelight, very, very low key. Don't think they ever got married. They might be secretly married, I don't know. But anyway, I love him. And he was in this movie with Emily Blunt, and she's married to John Krasinski, who is from The Office. Mm -hmm. And they also have uh, daughters, I believe. I don't know if they have a son or not. But anyway. Not big on pop culture, but I did know that. Anyway, Ryan Gosling plays a stuntman. Mm -hmm. And through a course of some, and he's in love with this girl on the movie set who has dreams of being a big time director. Anyway, something happens. Spoiler where he, alert. I'm just saying something happens where they are separated for a period of time. And I think you can get this from the movie screening that his he's trying to win her back. Mm -hmm. He's trying to win her back. Okay. And it's really funny. Now, it's very silly and you have to just let some stuff go, right? You have to let... You have to let it go. It's sort of like, what's that movie with Keanu Reeves you never want to see again? Oh, that John they've done? Wick? John Wick. How every bad guy is a horrible shot. They will fire 50 bullets at one target that's not really zigzagging or moving that quickly and miss the guy every single time. Well, John Wick is just so damn boring because it's the whole it's movie's him boring. blowing people's heads off. That's, that's the not, that's it. That's not boring. That's the whole though. movie. That's not boring. Someone killed his dog and he's gonna go kill everybody else. Well, now okay, you just spoiled that for a lot of people well, that didn't know that about the first John Wick. Okay. But again, like there's some stuff you just have to let it go. Like the bad guys are really bad shooters. Um and you know some of the stunts because it is the fall guy. It's very stunt driven. So you better like stunts. You better like explosions. You better like airplanes or barrel helicopter rolls. scenes and barrel rolls and falling. Lots of shooting, and fighting. Yes, all that. People busting through glass walls. Literally, at one point, they just said. Every stunt we've ever done on a screen at any point in history, do it right now. In a row. Simultaneously. Yes. So anyway, there's that, but it's still a really good movie. And I don't think you need to be told to stay for the end credits because they immediately, unless you just don't care and you want to go beat everybody in the car, I, I suggest you stay because during the credits, they show the actual stuntmen and women who were doing the stunts for the people pretending to be stunt people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so you get to see a lot of the cool little, um, the wires and how they stage things, which was interesting. And then immediately they go into the rest of the movie. Mm -hmm. So just stick around for all that. Yeah. So what did you think of all of it? Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Not a big Ryan Gosling fan. Really? I, I am now. Oh, okay. I always just looked at him from a distance like, okay, I get it. He's a very handsome guy. Now I know why the ladies like the Hey Girl meme. Now I get it. Yeah. He, he he took his helmet off in the movie and did the Hey Girl face. Remember so that? Good, With right? his hair like blowing in the wind. I'm like, oh, there it now is. Now you get now it. Now I get it. But no, he, he was great. Emily Blunt was great. Like Kelly said, though, there were some scenes where I'm elbowing Kelly like, this is... This is ridiculous. But, but it, I love but it. But I love it. But it's, it was so fun. And it had a little bit of everything. It had humor, tons of action, love story too. You know, it had a couple of tear jerk moments. You know, a little bit tear, pulling at the feels a little bit. All a little the feels. mystery. Well, it was a mystery too. And then it had a few plot twists. And then the big reveal, you know, at the end. So I loved it. So if you're looking for a, a fun movie to go to, just go, fine. go see it, man. It, it was great. Yeah. And I didn't feel like, you know, some movies eh, nowadays, you know, some of them got a little agenda. I didn't pick up any agendas mm -hmm. in this one. No. This is just a fun movie. And I felt... Which is how you should feel at the movies. Like, and, this is just fun. Yeah. And I really liked... You, I kind of got this feeling after we saw Bullet Train with Brad Pitt, which really didn't do that great at the box office, and I don't know that why. That was a good movie. That was a good movie like if you've never movie. seen Bullet Train. Um, Aaron Taylor Johnson's in it. He is also in... He was in Bullet Train, and he's also in... Fall Guy. Oh, was he the 
Yes. I didn't I knew realize. I'd seen that dude somewhere. I did not realize that was him. Okay. Because in the beginning, they say Aaron Taylor Johnson. And I was like, oh, Alan, this is going to be uh, probably the next James Bond. And then never once in that movie did I realize, oh, I'm watching Aaron Taylor Johnson until like literally right now when I'm talking about it. I was like, oh, that was Aaron Taylor Johnson. He's really good in it. And Hannah Waddingham, I think is her name, H Hannah from um, Ted Lasso's in it. Her and character, again, very unlikable, but she did a very good job with it. She's a she's a, a manager for a movie star. Very unlikable manager. Those, those people are like, you know, they're in your face yeah. when they get stuff done. But again, a very big surprise cameo, which is really fun. So. Oh, and another underrated uh, aspect of the movie was the soundtrack. Kelly soundtrack and, was great. Kelly and I both loved it. Soundtrack was Had new stuff, excellent. Old stuff, 80s stuff. Yeah, it was a good Just soundtrack. kind of a great mix, you know, to go with all the, the different scenes. As soon as we got in the car, Alan put on the theme to Miami Vice. I did. He was so moved by that. So we got to listen to that in the car a little bit. And then a little Phil Collins. I think that that was, and I, I don't want to spoil it and ex explain exactly what happened, but there's a scene where the Miami Vice theme comes on and that was that at that point in the movie i was like this is badass <laughs> that was because the stunt he remember the stunt he I did know, I, I was know. like this I is good. freaking badass but then you know like the soundtrack when you know phil collins he's not doing very well health wise he's actually in really bad shape but you hear him in this movie and you're like wow you forget how mm -hmm. great Phil Collins really was. He ruled, I mean, like the 90s and yeah. the early 2000s. Yeah. Remember Live Aid when he performed mm -hmm. in England and jumped on this jet and flew over to America and performed the second half of Live Aid here in the U.S.? He was just incredible. And uh, so I was really excited about that. I want to go listen to some of those artists I grew up with now. What was the name of the album that Cecilia was on? Su Su Studio. What was the name of that album? I can't oh. remember. Remember his head was on it? It was orange. Anyway, that was. It wasn't Su Studio. No, it, that wasn't the name of the album. I can't believe I can't oh, remember gosh, the name Alan. of the album. Oh gosh, Alan. Anyway, I had that on phone. cassette. That's like we one of the first albums have our I ever phones had. To Google it, and we're not looking That's at our okay. chat room, and we can't even ask anybody to help I us love out. Phil, I love Phil Collins. We'll figure it out, and I bet Alan will edit it into this video somehow. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, babe. Well, well, real quickly, oh, um, the last podcast, we told you that Alan and I were going to go golfing the next day. Fail. We did not do that. But it was not, it was a mutually agreed upon decision. It wasn't like me saying, I don't want to go, or Alan saying, I don't want to go. We both were like, we don't really want to go today. I think, what was the reason? Was there a weather situation? Very, very windy. It was bad weather. And very, very muggy. And, and we just were wasn't like, conducive to enjoying yourself. No, it would not have been a good experience. It was yeah. really windy. That's what it was. That I, I couldn't remember what it was exactly, but it was yeah. really windy. And I'll tell you the truth. Alan is a wonderful teacher when it comes to golf. Um, he really is. But I, I think I would have probably been in a mood that day wow. and it would have probably not ended well so we made the mutual decision not to do golf i'm a wonderful teacher huh? you are at golf but then no, you know else. but then i get in the tesla and he about bites my head off didn't bite your head off and i said you didn't know you wouldn't talk to cole this way didn't when cole's learn our, our almost 16 off. year old you don't talk to him when he's trying to learn how to drive this that's what i said did i not say that to you I'm just telling him what happened. I'm being misrepresented. Just telling him what happened. I'm being misrepresented. Now, I know I'm trying to learn golf, but one thing I will never do in this lifetime again, if I can help it, is pick up a baseball bat. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know if anybody follows me on my Instagram, but in my stories, you will see that I was invited out to a charity home run derby. Mm -hmm. Um, it's the same company as Reliant Energy. Over Christmas, I did the gingerbread building competition, and they, you know, they give out prizes. I didn't win that either. But then we had a vote element through our social media, and my followers, Midget. thankfully, um, I told them, I said, this is for money. This is for like $2,500 for kids' kids. And so I, I won that for kids' kids. So they invited me to come back out, and I, I'm not athletic. I'm terrified of balls being thrown at me. I just, I am. I'm afraid I'm going to be hit in the face. And um, 
Anyway, I wasn't really nervous. I prayed to God for peace about it. I know people are like, you can pray about anything, right? I like to talk uh, to God like he's my daddy sometimes because, you know, your daddy wants you to do well. He's cheering for you and he wants, you know, the things for you. So I said, you know, Lord, just, you know, please take away, make me not be nervous. So I wasn't nervous, but I also asked him to let me make contact with a ball. Mm -hmm. And he denied that prayer. God mm -hmm. said, no. So the thing was, I got a minimum of $1,000 donation to Kids Kid. That's good. Kids Kids. That's a positive. But for every ball I hit in the park, you know, in the fair play, um, I would have gotten an extra $100 for Kids Kids. If you hit, they had a perimeter up, not, because none of us are professional baseball players. If you hit it over that fence, you'd get, you know, $500 or something. I don't know. That wasn't going to happen. I was just wanting to hit the ball, just hit it. And I did not. I had three practice swings and 10 regular swings, 13 being my lucky number. You would think on the 13th ball, maybe. It was very, very embarrassing. It was very embarrassing. And my daughter was there and she was embarrassed for me. Mm. It was really bad. Um, that's all I'm gonna say about it. Thank you to Reliant Energy, but I'm not doing that again. I tried to make Kelly feel better by telling her that hitting a baseball is a lot of people, it's generally understood that a lot of people think that hitting a baseball is the <coughs> hardest thing to do in sports. Well, the, the professional pitchers are throwing like 90 miles an hour and above. This was somebody just kind of lobbing it at us gently. Understood. And understood. Kindly. But they're also. And there were other women out there. But they're also professional batters. There were also women out there that were hitting the ball. You are not repeatedly. a professional batter. I'm not. I'm not an athlete. And then I talked to some people that actually went to batting cages ahead of time. I was like, wait a minute. Was I supposed to really prepare for this? I didn't think that I was supposed to do that. It's a hard thing to people do. People were right? showing up wearing batting gloves with their own bats. It was just, it was just a bad, it was a bad situation. Showing up with their own bats and batting gloves? Yeah. Um, is that like showing up to Top Golf with your own clubs? I guess so. Which I It was embarrassing. I and I, listen, I make no secret of it. It is very well known in the Raspberry family. I am a poor loser. I don't like losing. Mm -hmm. And that, and I don't like being embarrassed, which is, I told him, Kelly, I said, this is why I've never really played a lot of team sports because I'm not good mm. and I don't like being embarrassed. And I envy those girls that mm. can just get out there and just, let's just have fun. But to me, it's embarrassing and it's not fun. And that makes me not fun. So I'm really sorry for my bad attitude, but it is what it is. You know, one of my and favorite. And I don't think at 57, I'm going to suddenly change. You know, one of my favorite uh, Michael Jordan quotes ever is. Is it going to make me feel bad? I don't know. Worse. It should motivate you. It will not when it comes to baseball, but go ahead. The great Michael Jordan said, you know what? You think when that toddler fell down for the 50th time in a row trying to walk, he says, you know, this walking thing ain't for me. Well, that's a toddler. And see, as I told him, Kelly, what I did today at the plate at 57, I should have been doing that at age seven. Right, doing you, what? Playing baseball. Trying. That's oh. when you. That's when you're a little kid and you're like, well, I don't know what I'm doing, and everybody else is out there same level. And then you know, as you get older, I, you know, I wish I was an athlete. I really do wish I was. I envy those girls. I, mm. You know that this can is play very, sports. This is very, very introspective. It here is. At the end of the podcast. It is. And I'm. We not could have done a, a whole podcast and on this. I am not a team player. I'm not. No. I. I'm a terrible team player because yeah. I've never played team sports. I'm always used to just like I'm. I'm bad at delegating. I'm bad at trusting people to. I mean, I don't mean like that, but I mean like if there's a project to be done to delegate, to get it done. No, I'm just like, I'll just do it myself, you know? And so I think there's a lot of reasons I'm like that is because I didn't play team sports. And the reason I didn't play team sports was fear and also embarrassment. You needed someone to help you get through that fear and embarrassment. I think it's, I think for well, you to put all that on yourself saying, well, that's the reason I suck at sports now is because I, I was scared and I was embarrassed when I was a kid. Well, that's what coaches are for. That's what parents are well, for, I'm right? Well, I'm too old for that I now. understand, but, but when golf, you were- Golf, I'm not too old when for, When you were so. a kid, that would be, have been the time for somebody to say, you know yeah. what, let's just play this sport and let's just get through it here. Let's go to practice. You know, my mother, uh, she played softball in the church softball league. And one time they were short a player and they asked me to fill in. 
and that was the last time they asked me to do that. They put me in outfield behind my mother, who was on first base, and it was horrifying because one ball got hit to me, and it was not good. So, I mean, it's just been, my mother was, my mother Price, my mother's grandmother, my mother Price, she played basketball. So it's not like I don't have some athletes in my family tree. Mm -hmm. You just never blame. No. Well, I, I wouldn't blame yourself for your... Well, it's embarrassing. Your ability now based on something that happened 50 years ago. It explains a lot. It explains a lot now, you know. I know, but we can go even deeper than this. For, for an adult to constantly say, well, I'm not good at this, or I'm not good at that, and I can't do this, and I can't do that because of my childhood. I don't think, I that, it's because of my childhood. I don't think that's super healthy either. I think it's because of my childhood. Well, you said when I was a I kid, I didn't do I didn't, I didn't play team sports. Right. That wasn't, well, that's, that's part of your childhood. Well, you know, I'm not blaming my childhood for that. I'm blaming that I didn't. It's See what I'm bogging down. Well, that's semantics. What that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, not, semantics. it's not semantics. Okay, anyway, Alan's going to teach me how to play golf until I decide I suck at that and I won't touch a golf so club So why again. is it we're able to be somewhat successful in golf, but you failed miserably in softball Okay, or golf baseball? is not a team sport, is it? I played on a team. You did, but at this point in my life, I'm not trying out for a team. It's but, just you and me. The only reason I said I was going to play golf is because you said you wanted to go to Hawaii again one day and you'd love to play golf over there. And I'm like, what am I going to do? But so I want to learn to play golf so I can play golf with you in Hawaii one but day. But as we talk through this, what is it about your experience with golf that's making it more fun and more enjoyable and you're more agreeable to doing it? And when you, when you actually have some success, you're like... Oh, wow. This is pretty cool. Because this is Because I can hit the golf ball. Why can you hit the golf ball? Because it's there on the ground. And I have whiffed it many times, but I can make contact with it. It might not go where I want it to go, but at least I make contact with it. And I'm not, and I also wasn't doing it in front of about 50 other people just standing there staring at me. Literally just standing there staring at me. I told the guy one t at one point after I missed, I was like, wow, the silence is deafening. I mean, it was embarrassing. So anyway, that's enough of that. I don't talk about anymore. Um, <laughs> so coming up on May 11th, real quick. There's plug, more? Real quick, a plug for Operation Once in a Lifetime. Oh, it's yes. a charity that's very close to Alan's in my heart. Um, but it's coming up and we only have a couple of podcasts between now and then to let you know about it. It's going to be at a place called Armor Brewing Company in, I think it's considered Richardson Allen area. It's up 75. Anyway, the Ramblin' Redhead, if you follow her on Instagram or if you uh, see her on her HGTV show called No Demo Reno. No, yeah, that's right. No Demo Reno. Um, she's going, it's her uh, brewery with her husband and they're donating the space for Operation Once in a Lifetime which grants wishes to members of the military and Alan and I go every year. They're bumping it up a little earlier this year so it's going to be on Saturday, May 11th I believe starting 5 6 o'clock you can go to Operation Once in a Lifetime's Facebook page and that's the best place to get the information on that event. A lot of great raffle prizes. They always have an awesome raffle. That's where Alan won the Chevelle mm -hmm. A few years ago. Sure did. There's an electric motorcycle being rattled off this year. I want to win it this year. year. I want to win that. There's a classic truck. I don't yeah. remember which one the right now. Are, I think it's a Chevy. There's a Louis Vuitton Neverfull. Oui, oui. There's vacations. There's all sorts of great stuff. And because it's a military thing, there's a lot of guns. <laughs> there's a, a lot, lot of guns being auctioned off. Yeah, a lot of guns. Yeah. So anyway, that's May 11th. Go to Operation Once in a Lifetime's Facebook page. That's the best place to get all the information on that. Okay. Anything else? Please like and subscribe to not just our podcast, but to our YouTube channel, A Sandwich and Some Lovin', which Alan's been putting a lot of work into. Hopefully you're liking some of what you're seeing. More to come as we get better, or as Alan gets better, I and you know say, what? editing. I'll tell you what. I just posted a video, just real quick, and then we're going to bring it home for Jerome here. Just real quick. We had one of our very, very best customers slide into the DMs and say, y'all talked about on the podcast about a year ago about some ground cover. What was that? And I said, you know what? I'm going to make a YouTube video. So I made a YouTube video. About on ground cover. The best ground cover for your landscape. Good, strong, dear, sweet, clean listener. It's called Dichondra. You can also play a drinking game in my video for every time I say got Dichondra, take a shot. You will be... Alcohol poisoning? Drunker and cooter brown after that. Yes. But anyway... I just posted a video on the best ground covers for your landscape. 
So you know, go to the YouTube channel. It's not just yeah, it's not just podcasts like videos, although we have those there too. Yes. You can watch the podcast there, but we're also going to start posting, you know, all kinds of a variety of things. You'll, Fun you'll just things. have to go there to see for yourself. Useful things. Okay. Although that's that can it. that can be debated. That's really it now. I'm done. Now I'm a master debater. You were supposed to say the reason you're enjoying golf more is because you have a good coach. Oh, I have a good coach. There you go. You, you did say that. So. I thought you were trying to get me to say what's the difference between that experience and the baseball. And I was thinking, well, the only difference I can think of right now is there weren't a million people watching me and I made contact what with I was, the ball. What I was trying to get at was you were coached you up. You were fishing. No, you were coached up. You were never coached up in any sports when you were young. No. Right. Which is why you have the attitude about sports that you have now. It's awful. It's embarrassing. Right. I was always picked first in PE at the beginning of the year because I was bigger than everybody else and they assumed I'd be a good athlete. I thought we were done. And then by the end of the year, I was picked last. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. That's why I don't like it when they do that to kids in school, when they, they divide up and you in each turn take turns picking. That's... I mean, how else are you going to do it? I don't know, but I think that's just cool. I wish we could, that stuff scars you. I wish we could go back and redo your experience with sports. Man, they do. They did so many things wrong when I was growing up. They weighed us in front of the entire class. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that kind of crap. Why they do that? They, you know, where they have to do. I guess it's some sort of because they have to do it for the government or something. They have to keep track of kids' obesity rates and things. Yeah, that yeah, they yeah. have to keep studies of that. And you remember when Arnold Schwarzenegger did that thing where everybody's going to get healthy and they put implemented all this stuff in the public schools? We, I don't really think we did that at Florence Christian. But I remember we all had to be like at PE class and stuff, and she just brought us up one at a time and weighed us all. And it's really not cute mm. because I was this height, like basically, you know, since fifth or sixth grade, mm. and all these other little petite little diminutive things, mm. you know, and I'd come up and... You know, I look back at pictures of me now, and I look back at me, and I'm like, well, I wasn't fat then. But when I weigh 50 pounds more than, you know, the the Sarah Beth or something, it was embarrassing. And so, you know, I'm, I think things have gotten a little better for kids. And Emma Kelly hasn't come home and told me anybody has made her weigh in front of the group mm. or anything like that. But anyway, man, this has been a great therapy session for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, Hopefully for you as well. You got a lot off your chest this podcast. It's good. It did. It's good. It all started with that list. Yeah, well, no, it started Set with your... Tone. It started with your experience with the uh, trying to hit a baseball is where it's we went so back to your upsetting. childhood. And then once so we upsetting. got back into your childhood, we started bringing up some other stuff. And I know everybody that minute left there thinking, that Kelly Raspberry is a poor sport. I'm like, duh. I've told everybody this for years. They don't. They they think I'm joking. I'm not joking. I'm a terrible loser. It's my. It's probably my biggest flaw. Seriously. Okay. You got anything else? No. Just say goodbye so I stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love you desperately. I love you. I love our listeners desperately. I love y'all. Thanks for putting up with that. Tonight we got the Dallas Stars, the Texas Rangers, and your Dallas Mavericks on tonight playing Game Five in LA. And by the time y'all hear this, we'll know who won. So I'm gonna go watch Luca the Don and Uncle Drew. Hopefully get a win for the Dallas Mavericks. I'm gonna go clean up the kitchen. All right, babe. Well, and I'm gonna podcast again real soon. We are someday. And in the immortal words of the great Keanu Reeves, who I still love, even though the John Wick movies suck, suck. life is good when you have a good sandwich.